Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and thanks so much for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a few of my animals that I really don't know why I haven't shown you yet. Now this is an interesting story. Back in August or so, I had a friend's... Uh, how do I put this? One of my best friends, girlfriend's friend contacted me over Facebook and she is an entomology student who was studying abroad in Costa Rica and happened to come home and unpack her suitcase to find a scorpion in her suitcase. So she contacted me because that said scorpion later on uh, produced 18 scorplings. So yeah, not only did she come home with this castaway, shall we say, or stowaway animal in her luggage, that said animal produced a bunch of young and she was like, what do I do with these? Fortunately for the scorpion, she knew exactly how to take care of them because that is very much a field she's passionate about and interested in. And she mentioned to me when we met up in person later on that those scorpions would always be like in their um, in their dorms or wherever it is you want to say, like the, the rooms that they were staying in at the uh, facility or the lodge, if you will, that they were staying in and researching in. So it's not that far-fetched that one of them could have ended up in her luggage. So after conversing back and forth, she's really trying to figure out what species she thought they are. And that was tricky because we felt like we might have narrowed it down to the actual genus. The species as of yet, to this day, I'm not certain of for sure. The last we discussed, we think they're the Centroroides limbatus, which is a more common species you can find in Costa Rica. I contacted Martin from Tarantula Canada because he's a good friend and he put in a good word or, and he contacted a few of his friends that are sort of scorpion experts and we can't seem to be certain, we can't really seem to narrow it down for sure. So. After those conversations were had, she, you know, she has 18 of these scorplings. So I was like, hey, you know, it, I would love to have a few if you're okay with that. So I met up with her and I obtained some of those young. And I, again, I don't know why I haven't shown you guys these animals because I've had them since, I guess it'd be October, since last October. And they were really small when I got them. Now they were given to me in these little renewable resource eco cups so can't get much more environmentally friendly than this for an enclosure and uh, yeah so I have a few in deli cups and there's four of them I will say in all honesty I started off with six and initially they were in groups of two and unfortunately two of them pretty well within the same few set of days uh, cannibalized each other and didn't really give me enough time to learn from the first case and move them all separately right after because they were doing f quite fine communally and she actually informed me that all her animals were together with the mother until we've both observed some cannibalism and separated them since so i have four animals left i'm really hoping that i have mixed genders i think i do but we'll see these are beautiful scorpions they're very active and they are very good eaters so i'm hoping that in this video i can show you the scorpions a bit and we can also feed a few, but these are my Costa Rican stowaways and I just wanted to show you them. I think they're pretty interesting animals. So to add further to this, in all honesty, yes, I guess it's a little weird because they're, I mean, they weren't like legally imported, but I'm not sure. Like, what would you do in this situation? You get home and there's a little scorpion in your suitcase and you have the means to take care of it. So you do, right? You're not going to hurt it or get rid of it or anything. And then the animal goes ahead and has a litter of 18 scorplings because these are live bears. They give birth to live young. Um, well, I mean, that's the impression it gives. They sort of like, yeah, they birth the young as fully developed uh, little scorpions that crawl onto the mother's back and hang out there until they molt for the first time and then they start to navigate away from her. In any case, what would you do? So these little guys are very interesting because I don't know that they're really in... Um, the hobby per se so it is kind of unusual to have them and I would like to be able to keep breeding them and, and, and make them available to people because they are really interesting and the, you'll see soon that the color is fantastic so without further ado let's go ahead and look at these animals so here they are 
the, uh, you know, potential Centroides limbatus. This is one of the enclosures here. So the scorpions have a little piece of wood to hide under with their substrate. And I sort of let the enclosure dry out a little bit before adding more water. It's usually how I keep them and they seem to be thriving like that. So I'll get them in the light a bit. Yeah, there they are. See them there? It's one of the scorpions. Now we're going to go in with the uh, camera that has the ability to zoom in a lot better on these guys. Alright, so this specimen actually just molted. You can see here's the lovely scorpion. Some incredible coloration here. A very nice long tail. Let's get that molt out of there to start. So I'll, just to be very clear, I don't handle my scorpions. There's a molt. Have a little peek at it on the table. It's pretty cool. So I'll move that aside. Yeah, what we could try doing now is offering this scorpion a, a prey item. So let's let's see if it might want to eat. All right, here it goes. Holy. Dang. See, I wasn't kidding when I said they have a good feeding response, was I? That is a hungry scorpion. See how quickly they mobilize the prey item too? It's quite impressive. Awesome! This one here is doing a bit of climbing on the piece of cardboard there it can hide behind. Lovely little specimen. Probably also ready to do some eating in a moment. So the same it's the same routine, I'm just gently moving the cardboard out of the enclosure. Getting a cricket ready. And then we'll drop it right in and have a peek. Kabam! Finished. Gently put the wood back, get our lid back on, and we'll do the third scorpion, which is coincidentally the second last one. Another beautiful animal. It's like my favorite line, because animals are beautiful. Hello. There they are. All right, let's see if this scorpion wants a little snack too. Dang, I really had, I almost missed catching that on the, on the camera. Oh, okay, you want some privacy when you eat, eh? Wow, that was, uh, that was a quick attack, all right.
And again, instant immobilization like that venom is made to just subdue an insect quickly. Craziness. Alright, so the specimen in here is usually pretty, like, feisty. So let's see if they are interested in eating as well. Hello, where are you hiding? There you are. And as you can see, this one recently molted as well. So I'll take that out. I'm gently going to coax the animal away from go, remove the hides, and then we will offer it some prey. Hello beautiful scorpion. You ready to have a snack? Would you like a Jiminy, as I always say. Alright guys, here it goes. And here goes the sting. She's got it. And they haven't stung it yet, so that cricket can easily start squirming around trying to get away. It's in shock, obviously, but watch what happens as soon as the venom kicks in. Here we go. As soon as it gets it. Done. It's done. That is fast-acting venom. Fascinating. Fascinating. And you saw how the tail navigates the length of the cricket's body looking for soft membranous tissue between the exoskeleton that can be easily pierced. That is key. That is what the animal is doing, you know, between the head and the thorax, right? Along the spiracles on the abdomen. These are the type of tender spots that the scorpion is going to try to pierce. Fantastic. Alright, well, that's pretty much going to sum it up then. So those are the four scorpions. I'm going to gently place the piece of wood back. And these guys get a lot of their water from their prey, but being that they are from Costa Rica, it is generally a lot more humid and less mild. So these guys get a good spray here and there, but they are also getting a lot of their water from their food sources. But I do spray them regularly, I just don't want the enclosure to mold, so I let it dry out between sprayings usually. Go ahead and get the lid back on, and we shall allow all these beautiful scorpions here to eat their food. Alright guys, so there you have it, those are my scorpions. Definitely some of the more unique animals in my collection considering how I came about obtaining them. But at the end of the day, it's kind of a tough one, right? Because like, the animal gets here. And what are you going to do? And technically they were born in Canada, so hopefully that makes it okay. All jokes aside, those are them. I really love them and cherish those animals. They are very, very interesting. Let me know two things in the comment section down below. What is your favorite species of scorpion? And secondly, which of those four animals did you think had the coolest takedown on the cricket? Well guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give the scorpions a thumbs up. And if you like to support my channel, feel free to subscribe down below. Once you've done that, ding the notification bell to know when my next video is coming up, and I look forward to seeing you guys in another video again soon. Take care. Holy. Dang.